Personal development is easy. <laughs> we all know more or less the things that we need to do if we wanna truly manifest our potential, work diligently, eat healthy and exercise, apply what we consume to transform raw information into knowledge. The problem though for many of us is that when we begin construction on this improved version of ourselves, in our rush to start building out the visible portions of the house first, good habits, solid work ethic, meaningful goals, we neglect to inspect the foundations upon which we're building, which as it turns turns out for almost all of us are extremely faulty. And so the house collapses over and over and over again. So in this video, I'm gonna show you four mental shifts you can make right now to fix faulty foundations before you start your next personal development endeavor. And you'll see that it won't just be easy, it will feel effortless as it should be. Now, this stuff has taken me the better part of 10 years to figure out, and I'm about to spoon feed it to you guys in a 10 minute video. So I guess what I'm trying to say here is pay attention and seriously commit to implementing these shifts for at least 24 hours so you can see how effective they are and feel motivation to commit to them long term. Let's begin. Shift one, think less. Thoughts are a curious thing, especially here in the West where we've been programmed to perceive thoughts as somehow being a critical component to solving every type of problem. The reality is almost the exact opposite and it's actually really, really silly if you think about it. Look at the entire self-help industry as an example, where the overwhelming majority of players suffer from the same simple problem, a complete inability to take action. And so how do they try to solve this problem? By thinking themselves into action, which is not only absurd, it is quite literally a paradox. It is impossible to think ourselves into taking action. Action by its very nature requires us to stop contemplating it in order to take it. So a really good example of this is procrastination, where in an effort to stop procrastinating, virtually everyone tries to think or motivate themselves out of it. Uh, many going as far as to watch videos and read books on the subject. They're trying to solve the problem of procrastination with more procrastination. It's insane. In the words of Alan Watts, a person who thinks all the time has nothing to think about except thoughts. So he loses touch with reality and lives in a world of illusions. Think less, do more. Shift two, feedback loops. So for the past few days, I've been pondering this quote from Nietzsche. We labor at our daily work more ardently and thoughtlessly than is necessary to sustain our life because it is even more necessary not to have leisure to stop and think. Haste is universal because everyone is in flight from himself. So if we look closely at our failures, I think that most of us will find that our natural condition is to actually never look closely at our failures. Instead, we simply vow to try harder the next time because it's actually a bit painful to look at failure squarely in the eyes because doing so requires confronting the reality of who we are. So to solve this, I think it's critical to make a conscious effort to create what are called feedback loops, a concept that I actually learned from Elon Musk who explains them as where you're constantly thinking about what you've done and how you could be doing it better. So I think the best way to do this is to have a set point during the day. Uh, for me, it's first thing in the morning where we review the previous day and consider our actions critically and directly. Where and why did we fail? Where and why did we succeed? What adjustments should I make today to improve on yesterday? Shift number three, willpower is a last resort. So my guilty pleasure food is oatmeal bread. Lightly toasted with a single swipe of peanut butter on top, it is delicious. So even though I have very high levels of willpower, recently I had a problem where every time I bought more bread, I bought it with the self-promise that I would only eat two slices per day, and most days I ate a lot more. There was even one day where I ate the entire bag. Yeah, that was definitely a low point in my life. Anyway, after a few weeks of this, it finally occurred to me that I should look more closely and inspect the foundations upon which this apparent weakness was manifesting itself. And what I discovered was surprisingly profound. So what I discovered was that the hungrier that I became, the more that I thought about the bread. Now, thinking about something that you don't want to be thinking about, even a single time is distracting enough, but I was probably thinking about that bread at least 50 times per day. But my problem was actually much worse than that because when I looked even closer, I found that within every single one of those 50 distracting thoughts, a, a battle was taking place where my primitive brain was on the offense looking for any sort of rationalization it could find to justify eating more bread. 
eating some of the bread is going to help me focus. Uh, I could just skip dinner later. I could just work out another 30 minutes later to burn it off. So out of these 50 battles, my willpower only had to lose one for me to end up eating more of the bread. So in realizing all of this, I determined that the only feasible solution to all of this was to go to the source and remove the possibility that I could even eat more bread than intended. So hoping that I could find a solution that didn't involve me just completely giving up the bread, I did a few creative Google searches and I found the case safe, a time locking container that allowed me to take out the amount of bread that I wanted to eat on any given day and then lock the rest in the container for 24 hours. From that moment on, not only was I no longer overeating the bread, but once the locks of the container slid into place, I was no longer even thinking about the bread because it was no longer a possibility. I went from 50 battles per day to none. Now, the point that I'm trying to illustrate here with my enthralling bread battle story is that if we want to eliminate negative habits or addictions, we shouldn't expect our willpower to have to win 50 plus battles over the course of a day. We should instead find the source of that thing and use our willpower one single time to restrict or eliminate it there. So if we're addicted to social media, we shouldn't just tell ourselves we're not gonna use social media, we should uninstall the applications from our phone and even possibly delete our accounts. If we're addicted to video games, we should literally remove the ability to use the console by giving the power cord or controllers to someone to hold on to or stick them in a case safe if you have one. Anyway, if we exercise willpower to eliminate the source, we remove possibility, which frees us from having to battle temptation. I still keep my bread in a case safe, but most days I forget to even set the lock. Think about that for a minute before we move to this next and final shift. Shift number four, aspire towards an addiction to progress. It is just as easy to become addicted to fast food, video games, porn, and social media as it is to become addicted to exercise, work, passions, and good habits. And for as much as I believe and advocate the importance of always keeping things really, really simple, I do think it's become critically important to have at least a basic understanding of how the neurotransmitter dopamine is responsible for our motivation or lack thereof. So I'll link a few videos uh, on the topic below in the description, including one where I describe how to switch our dopamine so that it actually motivates us away from low value instant gratification type activities and towards high value long term reward type activities. This is exactly why some people seem to be addicted to success because they are actually addicted to success. Most people make the mistake of looking at everything I do over the course of a day and thinking that I have tremendous discipline and willpower. And while I won't say that I don't have those things, what I will say is that they are almost completely irrelevant when you consider how utterly addicted I am to what I do. If I had to rely on willpower to train as hard as I do with boxing or salsa, I, I would never have become good at those things. If I had to rely on willpower to be able to work entire days, I'd probably still be a struggling web designer instead of the owner of a web design company with close to 50 employees. So the question now becomes, how can we quickly form positive addictions? Well, from my personal experience, it has a lot less to do with focusing on any individual activity and a lot more to do with focusing on the underlying element that makes all activities enjoyable, progress. Because when we become addicted to progress, then we only need to feel progress within any activity to be able to perform it consistently and effortlessly. And as a bonus, in addiction to progress, also simultaneously deters us from any activity that threatens to cost us progress, like wasting time on social media or Netflix. And to feel progress, all we need to do is take action towards a defined goal. So what helps me here, and something I believe is actually really important, is to conceptualize an idealized version of ourselves. So think of him or her as the culmination of all of our goals. So my ideal self is a genius businessman and wise philosopher who lives a simple life despite what others perceive as overwhelmingly complex. He can dance and fight and swim and bike at the highest of levels and has climbed the tallest mountain on every continent. By defining my ideal self, not only is it easy for me to feel progress within any of the positive activities that I perform, but that progress also now serves a higher purpose. To become addicted to progress is to make effortless what was once difficult. 